whopping three side games, it was finally time for the Toho series to return to the main shooters. This time with Toho 13, 10 Desires. Now this game has a really kind of dark afterlife sort of theme, with most of the collectibles actually being ghosts and spirits and stuff of the like. And going with that, besides the typical playable characters of Reimu, Marissa, and Sanae, Yomu makes a surprising return as the fourth playable character. Anyway, let's put this one to its paces and see how it holds up. The setup to this one is as simple as Toho games get. Spirits are appearing in massive quantities all over Gensokyo. So the usual gang, along with an unexpected ally in Yomu, depart to find out why. It's a delightfully simple setup that feels very back to basics compared to previous titles. And that approach also seems to be applied to the gameplay, but we'll get into that more a little later. In a stunning display of logic, Raymond's party beelines straight to the netherworld to find out what the heck is going on. After confronting Yuyuko, the girls find out that she has nothing to do with the bizarre influx of ghosts. Why the heck Yomo would have to fight her master for this simple info is completely beyond me, but maybe it's because Yuko is kind of a ditzy bitch. She also informs them that the spirits aren't just any spirits, but divine spirits. Upon defeating a couple minor adversaries and exploring the temple, they come upon the reason all the divine spirits have been invading Genzokyo. The spirits are there to witness the resurrection of a saint by the name of Toyosato Mimi no Mika. Naturally, instead of just letting things be resolved peacefully and letting the spirits leave after witnessing the rebirth of Miko, Raymo's group decides to beat her down for no real reason. After that, they are attacked by Nu from UFO, followed by a tanuki named Mamaza, who decides to try her hand at taking them on. I think you can imagine the results. With her dearly quota of Danmaku met, Team Raymo retires for the evening. Much like the story dispensing with much of the silliness that characterized recent Toho games, the gameplay reverts back to the pre-Mountain of Fate formula, so you have a limited number of credits and can continue where you die. As is typical, there was a fresh gimmick at play, the trance system. As you kill enemies, spirits of varying color will appear. Collecting these add points and fill a gauge at the lower left of the screen. A special note are the green and purple spirits, which give a piece of bomb and a piece of heart, respectively. Anyway, when the gauge is over two-thirds full, when your character is hit, or at the press of a button, she'll enter trance mode, where she's invincible and has a super-powered shot for a limited amount of time. Once the time runs out, the character would lose the life normally. It's easily one of the most interesting gimmicks in the franchise, and a powerful one to boot. The graphics are exactly what you'd expect at this point, continuing their very slight upgrade as time goes on. The music is good, but not up with the best of the series. Zoom's back to drawing his own character portraits with predictable results. The difficulty is tough but fair, and it may take you a few tries to make it to the end box. All in all, this is the best in the series since Imperish Night. Next up is yet another side game. This time another fighter by the name of Hopeless Masquerade. Now with Twilight Frontier back behind the wings, you would expect something pretty good. However, there's already kind of a problem. My editing computer just could not handle this game at all. It rang at about one frame a second, making it unplayable as a fast-paced fighter, so originally I just thought I was going to have a wash on this one. However, it surprisingly rang on my laptop which isn't rigged for gameplay recording. Thus, I had to go to YouTube for my footage, but as you can see, I could at least put it through its paces. The great crisis threatening Gensokyo this time is that the one human village in the land has fallen into hopeless pessimism, mainly because they live in a world with 500-year-old vampires, spring-stealing ghosts, moon-stealing rabbits, onis, angels that control the weather on a whim, nuclear hellbirds, UFOs, and even two feet tall fairies existing could kick their ass. Naturally, the various religious characters think that they could fix everything by having the hopeless masses adopt their faith. So it's a religious war between Shintoism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Just... Wow! This concept could only work in the East, because if you were to do this in the West, you'd piss off everyone. 
This would be like if you made a fighting game where it's Catholics, Jews, and Muslims fighting for religious dominance. Can you imagine the shitstorm that would happen? Just picture it. Anywho, this is a six button fight with light, medium, and heavy melee attacks, and light, medium, and heavy projectile attacks. What makes this game unique is that this is a groundless fighter. Both characters are flying the whole fight, which means that you can basically jump downwards as well as upwards. Which is a really interesting twist, and a gimmick that really suits the franchise. Of course, there's one other thing that you certainly know this by now, and that's the absolutely gorgeous graphics. Look at this! This is on the level of a full retail game. Seriously, it's pretty system taxing, so not everyone is going to be able to run it. Also a high point is the fact that you actually have quite a bit of customization. You can actually select one of the three religious affiliations with any character and you get a different moveset every time. Some are more focused towards melee while others are more focused towards range. It's a really interesting way of balancing things. On the other hand, the music is not quite on the same level as Scarlet Weather Rhapsody, but mainly because the character themes just aren't quite as good this time around. If you can run it, I highly recommend it as a really cool and unique fighter. The only real complaint I have is the lack of the old school cast, but that's certainly a minor complaint all things considered. Next up, we're finally moving on to the most recent Toho game, but that doesn't mean we're anywhere near wrapping up this retrospective. See you then!